Welcome to the West Winds Breviary. We trust these short online services will inspire you and ennoble you, giving you hope and courage as you shadow God in the redemption of the world. Hey everybody, thanks for being with us today for Church Online. You are not condemned to remain the same person as you are right now. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 16. Uh, now to contextualize this, this happens after Moses, who was born a Hebrew slave child and then miraculously elevated into a position of a prince in Pharaoh's court, murders an Egyptian and runs for his life to another country, hiding from God and from the consequences of his actions. So chapter 2 verse 16. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters. And they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. And shepherds came and drove the women away. But Moses stood up and saved the women and watered their flock. And when the women came home to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you've come home so early today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. And the priest said to his daughters, And where is he? Why have you left him alone? Call him that he may come and eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man. And the priest gave Moses his daughter Zipporah, and she gave birth to a son. And Moses called his name Gershom, for he said, I've been a sojourner in a foreign land. Perhaps the most striking feature of Moses' story is this. He changes. And so can you. You can change. You can change. 
Too often we feel trapped, constrained, and defined by our past actions. In Moses' case, he was a murderer. Now, he, he was a defender. I mean, he saw a Hebrew slave being beaten by an Egyptian, and so he advocated for the slave and in the process killed the Egyptian. So he, he was always someone who defended the oppressed, but, but he murdered the oppressor. And that, that may have crossed the line. At least it crossed the line because the person that Moses defended didn't thank him for it. He told everybody that Moses was a murderer. May, may not have helped Moses because, of course, his own conscience was now damaged and abused. So, so he ran. And the nobility of his eagerness to defend the oppressed was overshadowed by his, his, his murderous action. That, that seems like kind of a big deal. That seems like there's a lot of emotional freight that goes on in there. Whenever you go through something that's that traumatic, that intense, it tends to be like kind of the only thing you think about. And when it's the only thing you think about, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and stronger and stronger in your mind, and you just can't move past it. So Moses runs away. And you've probably run away from some stuff too. You probably remember the last time you quote-unquote murdered an Egyptian. You probably remember the last time that you overdid it, that you overstepped, that you overswung. And probably there's a little voice inside your head that tells you you can never come back from that. That little voice is wrong. You can change. You can change. So here's Moses sitting at the well, and these girls come up to get water, and they're bullied. So Moses, once again, defends the oppressed. Once again, Moses steps in. It's just that this time he didn't kill anybody. Good job, Moses. You have leveled up. Achievement unlocked. And I think that this is a Powerful story for precisely that and a couple more reasons. Because now Moses is defending without destroying. I think that's critical. You and I need to learn that skill. How do we defend the oppressed without damaging and destroying everyone else in collateral damage? I mean, how do we, how do we restrain our own murderous impulses instead of giving ourselves a free pass to damage whoever we want because they're bad. And as soon as they're bad, then we can do whatever we want. No, no, no. We, we've got to be people of integrity and people of faith. We've got to be people of character. We, we've got to reduce our impulse to destroy without reducing our impulse to defend. Secondarily, I like that. I just how multicultural this passage is. Remember, Moses is Jewish but he grows up as an Egyptian. You may recall that Jews and Egyptians don't get along very well. Then Moses goes to the land of Midian. Do you know who hated the Midianites? The Egyptians. Do you know who else hated the Midianites? The Jews. So now Moses is in a, a region of Africa where he meets the daughters of a priest. He meets seven black African girls. And then he marries one. This is a multicultural love story for the ages. And Moses demonstrates here that it's possible to reconcile without repairing every single wrong done. I think that's really important. I mean, Moses doesn't broker a treaty with, 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 with the priest, with Ruel. He, he doesn't go back and talk about all the things that have gone wrong and all the reasons they're justified to hate each other, both as Egyptians and Jews. No, no, he just, he just moves forward. He acts in favor of somebody he didn't like, Midianites. And then, and then that favor grows into friendship, and then that friendship grows into love. And they don't fix every wrong thing that's ever been done. They just, they just move forward. And last but not least, Moses and his wife Zipporah, they have a son, Gershom, whose name means I've been a sojourner in a foreign land, a foreigner in a foreign land. It's sad. And I love this about Moses. As he comes to a realization without any rancor, he looks at his life and goes, well, this is the situation I'm in. And it kind of sucks. Here I am away from my home, away from both of my homes, away from the Hebrew people, away from the Egyptian people, away from the palace, away from my identity, away from my upbringing. But there's no bitterness to him. Sadness, but no malice. I think you and I need to be reminded that we can change, that we can defend without destroying, that we can reconcile without having to repair every wrong thing that's ever been done, and that we can come to a realization of who we are and where we are without blaming and hating and shaming. And this, my friends, is the beginning of the road that will ultimately take Moses at the foot of the burning bush 
that will ultimately elevate Moses to the leader of his people and put him into historical and biblical significance. Lord, make me a servant so I can walk in righteousness. Make me like your son who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he humbled himself. Humbled himself. So I can walk in righteousness Make me like your son Never trading glory for pride He ever only praised your holy name That is why he came He came to save Oh, and was exalted the highest place here. Yeah. Can walk in righteousness. Make me like the sun, shining your light upon the earth until the Savior comes. Oh, shine your love through me. like to thank Rick Wrangler for always rolling with the punches, having the most amazing attitude, being one of the coolest people I know, and for all of his service for Westwinds during the breviary period. Thanks Rick, you're awesome, and I have a $5 gift card for you to Starbucks. It's time to move on. Leave your immaturity. Leave your waywardness. Embrace your divine future in which you grow forever. Grace and peace. May the Lord Jesus fill you with his spirit, his hope, and his truth. Amen.